There are increasing reports of child abuse and teenage pregnancy in recent times in Bhutan. This has raised concerns that have we failed as society to protect our girls? And to discuss more about this, we have with us uh, Dr. Menakshi Rai from Renew, the non-profit organization that aims to support and empower women and girls, especially the victims of domestic violence and sexual abuse. And we are also joined by Tashidema, one of the senior journalists from the national newspaper Kunsel. Tashi has years of experience of traveling and seeing the ground reality and reporting social issues in the country. Uh, Tashi, as a journalist, uh, you have covered this issue uh, on social issues. So if you could uh, just uh, tell us briefly about the recent uh, cases. La. As someone who has been in this field for the last 16 years, uh, and as someone who reported on these issues from the first year, uh, it's really sad that uh, we, I think we have been talking about protecting our children uh, since, uh, since the time I joined Kinsal and we are still, I think we are still in this uh, same stage and uh, it's, it's really sad that I think the numbers are increasing. Uh, the recent figure, uh, I got it from an organization is, was 337, but very recently I learned that figures are more, that are reported figures, I think 330 from the health ministry, because the health ministry has, an, has um, they have a reporting system where they report uh, on teenage pregnancy, where, there's, where the DHOs in the, uh, in the Zonkaks are supposed to report on teenage pregnancy to the health ministry on a quarterly basis. Uh, when I did the story, I did not get that data, but later on I believe that the number was 330 reported for last year and I think that I think Dr. Minakshi will agree with me that there are the cases are more because most people do not uh, report it. I say this in the context that if we go to the police key records the number I think of uh, rape, child rape and all are much lesser. So when we talk of teenage pregnancy here you know, since these uh, girls are under 18 I think the according to penal code those cases are supposed to have been uh, considered like rape. But then, uh, since it's not reported to the police, uh, when they, there are 330 reported cases on teenage pregnancy, there are more, there must be more on child abuse, which are not reported. Right. Uh, I recently heard about this case uh, in, 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 in a Zongkak where one, one girl uh, had already reported uh, like she talked to her school counselors about her uncle molesting her own uncle molesting her younger sisters uh, three years ago and this year she reported to school authorities in a different school that she had been molested by that she had not only not only molested I think she was raped by that uncle so I think uh, the reports are I think uh, what is reported what is happening in the uh, in in the ground is more than what is reported. It seems like the numbers are quite alarming. So, if uh, Madam uh, Doctor could add as well on this. Um, yes, la. The numbers, and everybody is after numbers, la. I think the moment we have one, you know, is big number for us, la. So you're talking about uh, a Bhutan with a population, a small population we have, more like 0.7, uh, 0 0.750 million people. And 50% are women. And again, 50% of that is our children. So we're talking about, you know, almost one, like 50,000 people, children. So then I think we're all after the numbers. These numbers are showing, what is the number telling us now? They're telling us, do we need more numbers to prove that we really need to do something? Are we doing our job adequately? Who is responsible? And are we ready to, you know, to provide the services? So I think these are the questions that these are the questions that I think it's now we have been asking ourselves. I think it's now time that we, every one of us, each one of us, needs to ask these questions in Omela. Because everybody after numbers, how many? Just three? Oh, only three? We're talking about one. There shouldn't be even one single. So that's where I think renew. We are trying to uh, do. A, we try to do a lot of awareness creating bedos actually, but we still feel as far as sexual abuse is concerned. Our Bhutanese society is still very young to accept certain things. And until then, as you accept that this is this is happening in our, our society, I don't think you'll ever find a solution. And just one agency, one, two, three few individuals talking about it, 
it will not make difference la. So as a CSO, as an NGO, how do Renew uh, approach la, such victims? Okay, um, well, uh, victims don't come by themselves. La. The children that have come to us was all reported by it, either by the adult or parents. But by then, it's at, at advanced age, stage now, remember? La. Children don't even know that that's happened to them. And uh, they are absolutely innocent that they don't even know that the child is a baby is growing inside their womb. That kind of cases that come to us. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what we do is, of course, prevention is better than cures. I mean, we believe in that, of course, very strongly. And we have been working with the partners like, you know, now this time we have uh, uh, signed an, a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Education because we really want to work with them because all our children are there with the education. So therefore, we wanted to work. And I think the education has also equally uh, expressed the concern that we really need to do something for the children besides their, you know, other curricular, you know, the I think. La. So, so when, when they come to us, of course, we do a lot of uh, counseling. We talk to the parents, we talk to the child. We make sure the child is not, you know, uh, pressured more with the questions and all. So we take time and, we, and then we try to dig questions uh, very slowly. La. So we, we try to do everything very professionally and very sensitively. La. We've been doing that. La. I have recently read your article where you have also mentioned that there is a communication gap, it seems, la, between uh, the CSOs, uh, Ministry of Health, police, schools. Uh, so uh, can you uh, give your comments on this? La? I think uh, first I would want to comment uh, on what Dr. Minakshi talked about or uh, their memorandum of understanding with education. I think that is the need of the hour because right now I think uh, the need of the hour is to protect our children. And since we are talking of teenage pregnancy here, I think we are talking of um, protecting our girls. So I think that uh, our teachers, we have many dedicated teachers who go all the way out to protect our children. Uh, and I think our teachers have a huge role in identifying uh, the victims of uh, domestic violence, victims of sexual abuse, uh, so teachers can play a huge role because uh, there are, I think, counsellors in schools. So uh, I, I believe there are about 182 counsellors in schools around the country today. And I think the children, most of them go to the counsellors when they have problems at home. So going back to the issue on this uh, case where this girl was raped by her own uncle, I think when she reported to her school um, counsellor, the school counsellor then three years ago went to the principal of the school and said that, okay, there is this girl who reported to us about this incident. And what the principal did, the allegation is that, okay, he just said that, oh, I know that uh, man, uh, so I will solve it with him. And that's there. So this year, the same girl, is uh, she, she goes to a different school and then she reports to the counsellor there that, okay, I, I was raped by my uncle and then then she, then she the school counsellor there talks to the principal and then this principal alerts the uh, social workers and the police and the man is arrested. So uh, I think there's a, there's a huge difference between uh, having a proactive teacher, a proactive and a dedicated teacher to protect the girls mm -hmm. and someone I think who I would not say it's not, but who do not have the, I don't think, have the empathy towards the towards protecting the girls. So I think our teachers can play a huge role and it's it's very good that uh, Renew ha already has a memorandum of understanding. I think I think this should go on. I think the problem here right now in, in our country right now is that we talk about these issues whenever there is a case. Right. I think we are talking about this because there is a 12-year-old girl who gave birth, uh, in a very remote village. Right. So I think uh, when it comes to this lack of communication, I think uh, even uh, even within the organizations that are supposed to protect our children, uh, we have this gender-based uh, violence key guidelines. I think that says, uh, that mentions that the, for the health officials, it's not mandatory for the um, health officials to report child abuse cases because then uh, their justification is that, okay, if you report this, such cases, then the children will not come and, uh, especially the teenage pregnancy, you know, that this teenage pregnancy, this uh, young mothers will not come to every health facilities. Mm -hmm. So, right. but then we have this penal code key provision which says that if you don't report 
such crimes, you're equally right. liable for not reporting the right. um, issue to the police. So I think, uh, so I think we have on record also many health officials, senior health officials from the health ministry and also from the uh, Jigme Dojo National Referral Hospital who uh, said that, okay, it's not mandatory for us to report such cases. So right. I think we need to, I think if you want to, if you are serious about uh, curbing this issue, I think uh, all these uh, miscommunications has to be sorted out and uh, all these uh, reporting issues also needs to be streamlined. Right, as uh, Tashi mentioned and as I have also read in uh, so many uh, local newspapers as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it seems like usually it's teachers uh, personal initiative sometimes to approach uh, the school or uh, so and it seems like there's so much of lapses also la, so bit the communication between CSOs and others so how is Renew working on it? La? Yes, la, uh, I think this is what I think uh, she also think I, I somewhat I agree with you that there's, there's a coordination problem and uh, from the from the agencies side like from you know National Commission Women and Children Renew and uh, you know, we have been providing all this uh, what you call the trainings to the service providers to respond to such issues and like how she pointed out you know you just saw the story right now you just heard the story here it all depends at the end boils down to the passion that you have and the compassion that you have you know I think that's very important there are some people who are scared they don't want to come forward they don't want to speak even if they want but and it, I think you also need some kind of uh, you know that empathy is very important and if you have passion and you have a compassion there's a way to speak you know, then I think you have to, if you can, at least, even if you cannot do yourself, at least if you can, you know, like uh, uh, refer to a person who can help the person. That would be very good. Uh, when we talk about child abuse, uh, it, it's not just uh, girls, la, there are boys as well. La. So uh, Tashi has also, uh, I think Kunsal has also covered Tumola, if you, and, uh, if you could just uh, sh shed some light on this. La. Uh, I think uh, when we talk of child abuse, ki, uh, we say that boys are equally vulnerable because um, we have reported this incident of uh, yes, um, young boys abusing a little boy in Paro. I believe uh, that's just uh, again uh, not emphasizing on the need for numbers, but I think it's just um, that the few reported cases, maybe one or two reported cases, I believe that boys are equally vulnerable. A lot, a lot of boys are being, mm -hmm. there are reports unofficial reports of how our uh, boys, are, young boys are equally vulnerable uh, and Tikkunsel at, uh, that was maybe five or six years ago, did a story of uh, STIs, sexually transmitted um, infections in our young monks. Mm. So I think that speaks a lot and I think uh, if, we are, if we are talking of protecting our children, I think uh, bo our boys also need uh, <coughs> intervention i think they also need protection when we talk about child abuse uh, there most of the victims are uh, there are also victims who are below the age of 12 la. so they are uh, I'm, I'm sure they would not be able to reach out for help more yes themselves. yes so yes. how uh, do renew make sure la, to protect them yes la. so <clears throat> we feel like at that multi level you know we really need to work at many multi level la. we need to work with the parents we need to work with the teachers we need to work with the community leaders, the community people, and children themselves. La. It's become so important now to have this kind of a, what they call awareness, you know, education, information, dissemination, programs at all this level. Because then it's a parent who has to be um, like, uh, take responsibility, you know, take care of children at home. Teachers in the schools, because schools, it's the teachers that they are, the adults are teachers. And then the community level, of course, community people with the community leaders that have to be there. And the children, I think at a very young age, at a very, at, at the earlier, the better it is for us la, to, to, to let them children know the, the, their body as they're growing, the puberty, mm -hmm. the urges that they have, you know. So if you can talk to children about this, educate them on this kind of, I'm sure they will be able to, you know, take a decision on their own one day. So, but what we have been doing right now is, ah, Nikolo Malap, don't talk about this, you know, children in Mishi, you know. Children knows everything now. So therefore, and like, you know, we were just talking about the boy, a boy child who's been sexually abused. There are plenty, I'm sure there are many, but I'm to, to tell you, to, to tell you, to honestly, Renew hasn't got so many cases of, I think, a boy, but we have one too. That shows there are. Now, how do you work on it? And there will be one, two who must have reported to us, but 
we really want to talk to that guy, of course, um, want to ask that boy, how is the service? Have you been able to really get, get the service? We want to, we want to ask. La. So I think we didn't really need to work at multiple levels. Mm -hmm. Very and important. Uh, when we, if, uh, if we talk about the, the recent cases well, in Samsung, I believe uh, uh, there were uh, comments that uh, they were blaming the victim as well. In, yes. in a way. So this is called, I think, victim shaming, uh, victim yes. shaming. Yes. So if we could, uh, if you could uh, share some light on also, why should we always, no. uh, usually we uh, blame the victim. No, so how do we make sure that the victim does not feel guilty? Because usually if uh, a victim usually feels it's because of her fault. So yes. I think that could be the reason they do, don't uh, come out also. Exactly. So yeah. how do we exactly. make sure la, they uh, talk about it? So that's what again the advocacy the awareness that camp that the program that we have been doing like with with children with the teachers with parents is is to actually let them know that something happens to who i mean something happens against your consent is not correct and you are not to be blamed you know so that kind we have been telling the children la. and children as young as you're talking about children mela as young as 12 years old will not have anything to say right. you know the children who have come to renew for counseling after the instance more often what happens is in the police station when the police people ask them they never open la. They when they then they of course refer to our counselors and our counselors take a very long time to at least make them speak. They don't even know what's happened to them. They don't even know. Of course some uh, have this fear in them saying that the, no, the uncle might might, might no, hit me, uncle might, he said he'll kill me. So that kind of things are also there. But that also come you know with so many several sessions of counseling. La. We cannot at, at any cost blame the victim la. so you're talking we're talking here about the adult versus the child adult is at the, in the at a level to understand what he is doing but child we always say child even you know a girl who is a 17 and below even 17 years old girl we still, still feel that the girl is not ready to even make a decision you know some of the things so we're talking about a girl who's at, at 12 at 12 years old yeah? i don't think we cannot take we cannot buy that not at all Child is absolutely innocent. Uh, when we talk of this um, recent case, uh, I talked to a few people in Samdut Zonka and I was asking them about the case. And I told them that I am from Kinsel. And then what happened is that the person I was talking to said that, okay, this man is a very nice man, you know. They are saying that, okay, it's, it's the girl, uh, the girl should, the parents should have taken care of the girl. No, so when we talk of victim shaming, I think, so I think it's kind of indirectly blaming that, okay, it's the girl's fault. So I really wanted to say, okay, it's here we are talking about a 12-year-old girl right. and a 35-year-old man, but I didn't want to because I have to be professional. I'm not, I'm not there to show my emotions, but then I, uh, as someone who reported on all this child abuse and domestic violence cases, I think uh, victim shaming is a huge issue in our society. Right. Uh, if, if a victim goes to... Uh, if, if the victim goes to police, I think it's very difficult for them firstly to prove that okay they are being molested or they, they, they were, yeah. so if they don't have uh, health records, it's very difficult. The second thing, if they go to the health also, it's equally difficult and then they, we have had like with due respects to all the hardworking police officials, hardworking health officials and hardworking teachers. There are many others who just say that okay, no, the girl itself is like that. Right. You know, in the Bhutanese mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. I think victim shaming is a huge issue even uh, in our society. And I wanted to ask uh, doctor that uh, uh, if we talk about the culprits as well, uh, yes. we sometimes treat them like a monster uh, yes, yes. and uh, we uh, consider them sick. Uh, so, uh, is it uh, too far-fetched an idea uh, to uh, ask that, is, it, uh, is there any facility uh, where if a person feels he might uh, be capable or he might be danger to somebody, can they approach Renew or is there any helpline uh, for them? Oh, yes, la. that is a very, very important question. La. Uh, I feel, yes, they should be because we are all human beings. No, la. We have, we have these urges, and, you know, different kind of urges and all. But if you are aware, if you are aware of your, yourself and uh, you are willing to, uh, willing to prevent uh, from something, you know, from, from happening, from, from something happening, you know, I think they should, they can take, they can take help. Like, you know, like, you know, 
that is the that's why we I, that sometimes it gives me it's a little surprising to know being born in Bhutan a Buddhist country I don't know why people have not found we have all the resources here la. Mm. you know the monastic body here we have that's why we are working very closely with monastic body also la. that um, that uh, mind training is the bottom line of entire no, Buddhist teaching Buddhist teaching is a mind training you can change yourself Mula. So, I don't know why people are not coming forward it. So, therefore, this time we are working with monastic body. So, we want to, we want to, we want to have a program for everyone, mm. for all of us, Mula. including inclusive of all those now the perpetrators who have maybe were about to do it. Tell them to be aware. Mm. People who have already done, please mm. repent, right. Mula. and then say that now I'm not going to do it. It was my fault, Semichi. And then to be an instrument to let others know. See. If you do this, this is the consequences. And Her Majesty, as a Sangha want you to show, all the time, every time she reminds us, counseling me, even at home, even if you need to your wife, what are you doing? Give the dose of counseling. So at home also, I think if you can start, why not? Everything is changing. That's the only thing that's permanent. Everything can be, everything mm. can change. So if you're willing to come change, if you're willing to change, you can do it and awareness is very important and that's exactly what we have been uh, uh, you know creating awareness on uh, in the schools and all is to please let your children know what awareness is and it applies to everyone that's why we are intelligent beings that's why human beings why do we say it's because we're intelligent being and we can when we talk of perpetrators i think uh, when we have this parogi um, a rape and murder of this eight-year-old in girl in Paro, the case, and the nine-year-old girl in Dijin Shilling, the case unresolved. I keep saying that, you know, the danger is because when we don't apprehend the perpetrators and when they are right. scot-free, the danger is that they are going to do that to others. Right. So we right now we don't know how many uh, this uh, this men because they already these are uh, you know right. pedophiles and then they right. I think it's in it's their innate nature to do such crimes. So I think uh, the problem is that when these people are not uh, arrested and when these people are scot free, there are more people, uh, more there will be more victims. more victims. And then also, I, I keep saying that when we talk, like when we, I think for the teachers and for the health officials, it's very important for them to report this uh, matter because when uh, when 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 they try to resolve these issues out of their uh, misplaced compassion. This uh, for the men, I think, who who, uh, who who does this thing. For I think it kind of gives them uh, that okay, it's all right, and no one is going to do anything to me. So I think when we talk of uh, child abuse, uh, if we want to, uh, if we want to solve this, uh, we can't solve this. But at least if we want to minimize this child abuse and teenage pregnancy issues, I think we uh, a lot of us need to work together to ensure yeah. that all, all these uh, matters are reported. Right. Mm -hmm. I really wish we had more time, uh, but I'm sure we'll have more uh, discussions like this in future. So as we uh, end our program, uh, your advice for our viewers. I'd like to inform the people, our parents, our teachers, to to be very alert, and uh, and if there's, uh, you can, I think you should teach your children to talk about it often, and then to let your children know who to talk to if she has, if she or he has a problem, and she, and also to our children if they are watching us, children the way we have to tell, be careful, you know we have this uh, story, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. You know, a wolf in mother, grandmother's uh, attire. So there will be a lot of people who your uncle law, achu law, lesha, cousin law, your uncle law, law, so many people. And all the sexual abuse is happening. It's a perpetrator that happens to be of somebody you know, somebody who gives you sweet chocolates and somebody gives gifts, you know. So you'll have to be careful. So this is what I want to give it to the, 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 the let the children know. And parents, and, and parents, please, please take care of your children more than the perpetrator like, because here we also talk about the no? soft corner for perpetrator mena, defamation right. and all that's exactly what's happening but uh, and then uh, we have the you know contact numbers and uh, we can you know the NCWC uh, we renew here the school counselors here and we also have uh, media and we have numbers which will be going to be flashed so this is the message that I want to pass it to our viewers la. I would uh, want to request like uh, all of us la including ourselves, that we really need uh, 
to be serious. There are laws, policies, rules and regulations that say that, okay, we have to protect our children, but that's not translating to action. Yes. So uh, it's very important for us to implement what is there on paper. And also, uh, I would want to, I think I would want to highlight that in most, when we talk of this child abuse, uh, and uh, sexual abuse case. Now, I think it's happening most to the vulnerable children who do not have access to all this information. I don't even know if some uh, most of these uh, vulnerable children would even listen to what we are talking. Right. Uh, okay, if it's educated parents, if they are children from educated parents, I think they listen. But then, when we talk of all this child abuse and sexual abuse cases, is uh, children from broken families, children from alcoholic parents, children from very economically disadvantaged families. So. There, I think, we, as a society, as a community, as relatives, as friends, as neighbors, I think we all can play a huge part in uh, reporting about these issues. If we, reporting that, okay, if I, and as teachers, as health officials, I, I think especially teachers, like if, if some children who come to school late, if they uh, if they are withdrawn from mm -hmm. the, uh, at the like at, in the class. If, if the teachers, uh, I know a lot of uh, our teachers do take this extra effort and uh, I, I really wish and hope all our teachers could do that and ask what's the problem and then if they can, if they, if they think that they, they are vulnerable children, uh, if, if children in difficult circumstances, if they could report Renew or NCWC, I think uh, all this, we need this collective effort to address this uh, present issue, Sejuni. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your time and sharing your insight with us. And, uh, and for our viewers, if you know anybody who might be vulnerable or if you know any victim of sexual abuse, you can uh, contact Renew at the following numbers. And you can also contact Mediala. And thank you for watching.